This all-star game segment is celebrated by Subway, where winners eat. This is Ken Rosenthal from FoxSports.com here with my colleague, John Paul Morosi, also of FoxSports.com. And we are here with your first half recap. And what a first half it has been. And what a first half, and I can't believe we're talking about this, for the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> here are the Buckos among the best records in the major leagues as we end the first half and enter the All-Star break. And, of course, the obvious question is going to be, can they keep it going? Because the last two years, JP, they certainly did not. But what we've seen so far, and this is what's important here, we've seen a much improved pitching staff, both the rotation and a powerhouse bullpen. We've seen a much more athletic team, a team with some weapons. I do worry about their offense. What do you see? Well, Kenny, I'm going to make one fearless prediction. They will have that winning record they've been looking for for two decades. That's going to happen. They'll finish with a winning record. My question is, do they have enough pitching and enough offense, obviously, to win the division? I think they do, and I'll tell you why. Pedro Alvarez, much better all-around player than he was last year. I know the average is a little bit low, but that is big-time power. Also, Starling Marte in left field, a dynamic player to pair with McCutcheon at the top of the lineup. This is a much better all-around team. Maybe they make a move, Kenny, before July 31st, but I think this team, as is, is good enough to hold off at least the Reds. Maybe not the Cardinals, but at least the Reds in the NL Central. I would disagree with that. They need to make a move. They need to get a bat. Now, there is a team that is on the West Coast that has a lot of bats, a lot of arms, and a lot of money. And this is a team, some people I know, I can't recall who, had their manager fired in May. <laughs> but the Dodgers have come way back. They've come way back with Yasiel Puig playing a major role. They've got four decent starting, well, better than decent starting pitchers now. Kershaw, Greinke, Nolasco, and Rue. They may add another. They may add bullpen help as well, J.P., I see them as running away with the NL West. Yeah, Kenny, I think the Diamondbacks missed their opportunity, I think, to pull away when the Dodgers were nowhere. And obviously the rumors about Mattingly's demise were there. But I think this, to me, is a team that probably has enough as is to win the division. I think that maybe they do have that bullpen piece, Kenny, but I think for the Dodgers, it was just a question of getting healthy and getting used to the expectations that go along with being a front runner. I do think that getting Kemp back, he's the X factor for me. Matt Kemp's health, if he is himself, if he's the guy we saw a couple years ago, Kenny, this is not just a division winner. This is a possible pennant winner and World Series contender. To me, they really can't be themselves unless Kemp comes along. And hey, let's not forget Henley Ramirez, as you wrote recently at FoxSports.com. It's not just Ben Puig. It's Ben Hanley really elevating this team. They need Kemp. They need Crawford. They need to be more healthy. They have not been healthy. Now, one guy who has been healthy is the defending Triple Crown winner and a guy who, if not for this cat Chris Davis in Baltimore, would be probably zeroing in on another Triple Crown and still might. Miguel Cabrera of the Tigers. I don't know, JP, what else we can say about him. This is a guy that merits all the superlatives. He is the best hitter in the game. He has been the best hitter in the game for quite some time. And I guess the only question is, what can he accomplish this season that he hasn't accomplished already? That's a great point, Kenny. Well, one thing we can say is this. No hitter in baseball history has won the Triple Crown in consecutive years. And as you point out, Kenny, he leads in batting average. He leads in RBIs and probably will do so by comfortable margins at the end of the season. It really comes down to can he keep pace with Chris Davis in home runs because that would be an achievement, Kenny, that would put him above and beyond among the all-time greats in the game. He did, of course, win that... World Series ring with the Marlins in 2003, but I do sense from talking to Miguel it would mean something different if he did it at this stage of his career when he's really become a leader for the Detroit Tigers. I think he really wants to get that World Series ring again. It would be very meaningful for him at this point, and certainly with the Tigers, he has the teammates to do it. All right, one more meaningful story in the AL East this first half, the Yankees and the Red Sox. We've got to be quick here, JP, but it has amazed me both these teams. The Yankees for, of course, their resiliency in hanging in there despite all of their injuries. And the Red Sox, despite what I thought was a rather mediocre free agent class that they acquired, they still have found enough offense to lead the league in runs. They've gotten enough pitching, even with Lester disappointing and Buckholz being hurt. So this is a team that I think has surprised all of us. They really have, Kenny. I think the Yankees are charming underdogs. <laughs> They're in fourth place right now and probably will stay there. I just don't see them being able to compete with the rest of the three teams at the top. The Red Sox, to me right now, I actually think the Orioles, Kenny, will overtake them by the end of the season for that division title. I think they're a better all-around team, but the Red Sox, very impressive so far this season. Maybe the manager of the year so far in John Farrell. All right, if we had more time, JP would tell you which Orioles would pitch their way past the Red Sox. 
because I don't see them out there. But that's your first half recap. For John Palmarosi, I'm Ken Rosenthal.